Okay, so before making this video, I'll be honest, I wasn't the biggest fan of Dokubi, but after researching a ton for this video, writing the script, and getting gameplay for her, I must say that now she's one of my favorite operators. You guys will see throughout the video how amazing Doki's lore is and the story she has to tell. I'm just gonna be real with you guys, this is one of my favorite videos I've ever made. Let's get right into it. So in order to tell Dokubi's story, we need to start early in her life with her childhood. So Doki's real name is actually Grace Nam, and well, if you want to be technical, her South Korean name is, well, this? But there's literally no way I'm going to pronounce that right, so I'm not even going to try. Moving on. Well, Grace Nam was born on February 2nd in Seoul, South Korea. Wait, this is actually <laughs> hilarious because as I'm sitting here writing this script and filming this video, I looked at the date on my monitor and it's February 2nd. So I'm literally writing Doki's lore story on her birthday. So join me guys in wishing Grace Nam a happy birthday in the comments. I'm sure she'll appreciate it. Anyways, she was born into a family in South Korea that kind of let Grace do whatever she wanted. And to be honest, Doki was a troubled child and looked the part as well. She looked like she was going to cause trouble and in fact caused lots of trouble in her childhood. We'll see how this affects her really throughout her whole life, even leading up all the way to when she joins Team Rainbow. So Grace was a rough child and would often play soccer with the neighborhood boys. No problem there, right? Except whenever she got mad, she'd start throwing fists and getting into tons of fights with them. Again, a troubled child. But the worst thing really is her attitude and disrespect to figures of authority like her teachers at school. When Doki wasn't causing trouble, she would scavenge or buy spare parts and barricade herself into her room to build computers. This was honestly her true passion. Creating a technology out of nothing fascinated her and would be the driving desire throughout her life. So Doki's attitude and behavior got to the point to where she desperately needed to change if she had really any hope of being a successful person. Her teachers actually forced Grace to conform to expectations and soften her image. They made her not look like a troublemaker anymore in an effort to help her believe she can do better. Grace bought into this act as really the only option to save herself. To better play with and manipulate preconceptions, she bought fake glasses and adopted the geek girl persona. Yeah, I had no idea that Doki doesn't actually need glasses, she just has them for the part, and she plays the nerdy girl very well and her love of electronics really helps convey that persona. Okay, so this change in extreme attitude really paid off because Grace started performing very well in school and obtained a scholarship to the Korean Advanced Institute of Science and Technology. But after graduating college, she decided to enlist in the Republic of Korea Army or ROK for short. She was assigned to the 5163 Army Division, but to be honest, she kind of hated it because the army saw Doki as just a nerd with no real skills besides tech. So they threw her in an office as work. So Grace left the office because she was tired of it and trained for the 9th Special Forces Brigade, also known as the Ghost Corps. She trained so hard that she actually landed herself a position with the Ghost Corps, exceeding everyone's expectations of her. While there, she trained even further with mountaineering, survival techniques, and the art of guerrilla warfare. Okay, so yes, Doki made a big change in her life on how to better deal with her anger and attitude, but it was never really perfect. She often struggled with it, and she would often still act up frequently and mouth off to a person of authority. Even though the ROK was a very, very highly disciplined army and she honestly didn't behave very well, she still gained notice throughout due to her amazing tech skills and for being highly adaptable to situations. She was probably able to adapt very well. She's always been adapting by faking this nerdy girl personality. Later on during a joint training exercise with the Detachment K of the Green Barrettes, the American instructors leading the training really heavily encouraged her to focus on breaching defenses and exploiting weaknesses in security networks. Also, they really pushed for Grace 
to try joining the 707 special mission group the white tigers amazingly she got the position and this was a much better fit for doki and her skills of course grace's mouth and attitude got her in trouble though as she really butted heads with a guy named mm, major general ku and this dude has ties all the way up to the top of the south korean military so long story short not a guy you want to piss off now ku made grace's life miserable because honestly he didn't like her so he started limiting her training and preventing her from reaching her full potential she genuinely hated him and the position he put her in grace saw a glimmer of hope when she heard about the amazing potential of team rainbow when on a training exercise with the sas they told her about it she got so excited because finally she can see herself with an organization where she can fully use her skills and pioneer amazing things in the technology industry. Of course, this coup dude wouldn't let her join if she asked, so she had to apply to reach out to Team Rainbow without him knowing. She applied and they saw her as a great fit for the team and accepted her onto Team Rainbow. This should be an amazing time of joy and sense of accomplishment for Grace, but that was a very short-lived feeling. Major General Ku saw this as a huge act of defiance that Grace joined Team Rainbow without his permission and immediately looked for anything to expel Grace from the White Tigers as quickly as he can. He did this as an effort to tarnish Grace's reputation and possibly get her removed from Team Rainbow. And I'm sorry, but this guy is a dick and I can't believe Grace put up with him for so long. So shortly after Doki joined Team Rainbow, Specialist Vigil was soon recruited after her. One of the only ways that Major General Ku would allow Vigil to join is if he spied on Grace and report on all of her mistakes. Again, this is an effort to get her removed. Vigil is neutral and has no hard feelings towards Grace, but he has to do what he's told. I have a great Vigilore story you should watch after this if you haven't already. Grace started becoming close with Echo and works hand in hand with him all the time to engineer and improve new countermeasure technologies. Before Grace has her interview with Harry, the director of Team Rainbow and the new Six, he wrote a little note about her prior to the interview. And it says, quote, Grace plays with expectation because she wants people to underestimate her, but it's different with Rainbow. Before, she knew how to control the situation and was never afraid of failure until the stakes became this critical. She is among men and women who reward asymmetrical thinking, even though she knows she has a target on her back. Rainbow was her most daring stun, and she knows she's alienated herself from the Korean military. Any slip up at this point will see her drummed out of the military entirely and this has added pressure to perform, improve, and succeed. So it really does look like Dokubi is struggling with her new life at Rainbow because she has to be literally perfect out of fear of being kicked out and banned from the Korean military, end quote, Harry wrote that. So now let's move on to the psychological report that Harry does to all new members of Team Rainbow when they join. I'm just going to read what Harry wrote because I honestly love this evaluation so much. So sit back and listen to what Harry had to say. Grace Nam is playful, clever, serious, and reckless, as her codename Dokubi implies. She's also mischievous. Recent reports say she's been pushing herself beyond her limits, and the team has expressed concern that she's overconfident. Added to that, we have past disciplinary reports stating that her actions have been unorthodox, which I can believe. I was there when she hacked the system. I saw the promise when other people wanted her punished. Nam's a talented operator, but it's important to note that she's one of the youngest Rainbow recruits and has little combat experience. This job is intense and the stakes are high. Some days I have the impression she would rather be behind her computer controlling things from where no one can touch her, but she wants to improve. She wants to change and to do that, she has to challenge herself. I'm certain the overconfidence is about fear. She's afraid she doesn't belong, that she isn't good enough. As for past disciplinary hearings, the shortcomings are with the commanders, not with Grace. A talented hacker isn't just someone who's good with code. They're a creative thinker with the ability to see connections 
the rest of us can't. Yes, there's recklessness. Yes, there's an element of bravado. But whatever else people may see, they must also admit that there's a method to Nam's madness. When I asked about her childhood, she boasted of schoolyard fights and described the extreme academic pressure she faced. The school would shame parents by publicly comparing their children. She's carried this burden of expectation throughout her life. So to have specialist Chu Kyung Ha or Vigil chastise her creates a friction that Nam will have to address. She told me her grandparents introduced her to Buddhism when she was little and that she's recently begun visiting the temple again. I'm reassured this is her way to cleanse her mind and spirit. Her pursuit of inner balance will allow Nam to achieve her full potential. Her bluster may irritate operators such as specialist Abana, but I must say, let her be." End quote. Wow, this was absolutely incredible. See what I mean, guys, how I said that Dogabi is one of my now favorite operators now? Oh, and by the way, when she got her call sign Dogabi, it actually is a reference to the folklore in Korean cultures of a supernatural creature called the Dogabi. It's a creature that uses its powers to interact with humans, either by playing tricks on them or by helping them. A very mischievous supernatural being that honestly fits Grace very well. Okay, so I know the video is getting a bit long here, guys, but there's just so much to talk about for Dokubi. I love it so much, and I'm trying not to leave out as many details as I can. Hang on, guys, we're almost at the end of the video. Stay with me. There isn't much to talk about the device evaluation for Dokubi's logic bomb, but there are a couple of cool parts in it that I want to go over. So besides the talk about how she uses this weird coding to hack the enemy's gadgets and cameras, she also talks about on why she only lets the hacks go for a couple seconds before ending it, making their phones turn off. The reason is that she doesn't want anyone to know really what her coding system is so they can study it and develop anti-hacking software for it. So she developed it to erase itself after a few seconds of hacking, so it disappears from the device, leaving no trace. This is brilliant, actually. Also, when the hack goes off, the enemies get a message on the device that displays these Korean words, which roughly translate to, don't mess with me. I also thought this was pretty funny. Also, she talks about how Mute developed a way to intercept her signal when close enough to one of his jammers. Now, this made Doki be a little frustrated because Mute did this, but fueled her to research a way to bypass his jamming. So far, she hasn't figured it out yet, but she tells Mute to look out because she's coming for him. She will find a way to make it so his jammers can't mute her logic bomb hacks. Okay, so as we know, Grace never really found out a way to fully deal with her anger in a healthy way. We can see this come to life again in the Hammer and the Scalpel cinematic Ubisoft released in 2017. Honestly, this is one of my favorite ones, and we can see Thatcher and Dokubi at the very end of the training exercise with the clock ticking down. You have two people with two extremes of technology teaming up. Thatcher, of course, hates tech and think it ruins people and makes them too reliant on their devices. I mean, come on, fucking laser sights, right? While Dokubi is all about technology and is a pivotal part of how she executes operations. So with the clock ticking down, we can see Dokubi spending some time to hack the enemy's phones, but there honestly wasn't enough time for it. So Thatcher got really frustrated with her, just threw in the EMP and finished the training exercise himself. Now in typical Thatcher way, he gets angry and he pretty much scolds Dokubi for this mistake. And of course she mouths off and fights back. Well, this probably shouldn't be something you should do to Thatcher because he just proves his point further. Doki goes to Harry for guidance, and if you want to watch the cinematic, you can hear his words of wisdom to comfort Grace. I bet she was probably very worried she might get kicked out and therefore removed from the Korean military as well, ending her career. But she didn't, and a couple years later at the very first annual Tournament of Champions, her team made it to the finals along with Thatcher, Sledge, Blitz, and Habana. She trained so hard and made an amazing impact on the round when she literally saved Thatcher by putting a non-lethal round in Cavi's head literally as she was about to choke out Thatcher. Thatcher's lesson in the scalpel and the hammer cinematic paid off as Doki learned from her mistakes and acted very fast to save Thatcher without her technology. Just good old fashioned bullets, quick thinking, and we all know that's what Thatcher loves. 
and a six inch blade <laughs> well guys i'm sorry for keeping you guys for so long there was just so much about dokubi that i want to talk about but i guess i got a little carried away with the length of the video i really hope you guys enjoyed the video and if you made it to the end let me know by commenting jeppy is my dad so i know who the real fans are make sure to leave a like and subscribe with notifications if you're new now with all that being said jeppy out